On May 21st, 2021, I made this video where I showcased the various locations of this little teddy bear, which can be found in all the maps in Valorant. Granted that, I did miss a couple locations. Now, roughly two years later, I thought, hey, what exactly is this bear? Or rather, who is this bear? I know you've seen him before because he's all over the place. He's in our sprays, our gun buddies, and he's even been made into merch. I think we all sort of just accepted its existence in the world of Valorant because I tried looking for answers online and all I really got was that this little dude was called Tactabear and that he comes from the Tacta Friends collection. I mean, I get that it's a cute little easter egg, but I wanted to know if he meant something more. I wanted to know where he came from. I searched as much as I could. I even tried reaching out to some Valorant map developers, but to no avail. So today, I open the discussion to you guys. I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite theories that I've come across in my quest to figuring out who exactly Tactabear is. But before we get into all the fun theories, I want to provide you guys with some context and the available information that we have on this bear so far. Tactabear is a fun easter egg to look for. If you don't think about it, you won't find him. But if you look closely, you'll see that he's everywhere. Sometimes he's just a drawing on a computer, sometimes he's there in the flesh, hiding in the shadows, just watching. Did you know that he's also in the practice range? If you play as Brimstone and activate his smoke UI, you'll find all the bots marked on the radar as little Tactabears. He's also inside of the trophy at the top of the parkour course. I find it interesting that a lot of the locations where you can find Tactabear are in places where you can't see him without flying. A good example of this is on Breeze. If you fly all the way out of CT spawn towards this building, you'll find a whole group of them together. Here's another spot on Breeze above the mid doors. How's anyone meant to find him here? I guess this stirred up enough commotion to grab Riot's attention because in the episode 3 act 2 battle pass, they added a very special gun buddy called Follow Me, which featured a compass that would point you to the location of Tactabear. But that isn't the only gun buddy that references attack to friends. Like I mentioned earlier, they're featured heavily in a lot of Valorant's in-game items, dubbed the attack to friends collection. As of now, there are a total of 11 player cards, 11 gun buddies, and 22 sprays. The Tacta friends include Tacti Bear himself, Tacti Bunny, Tacta Squirrel, Bruno the Corgi, Dan the Penguin, Mance the Cat, Rubber Ducky, Teal the Pig, and Trevor the Sloth. They have a lot of presence in the game, but what about outside of the game? Are they also prominent in the Valorant lore? I skimmed through all of the current cinematics that are released and I found that the Tacta friends only make an appearance a handful of times. During the retake cinematic, you can find Tacta Bear on the ground right over here. Then, a few seconds later, you'll find Dan the Penguin by these barrels. This may be another one, it could be the same penguin, but I can't really tell as it's a little hard to see. And then, we don't see any more appearances up until the newest Shattered cinematic where you'll find Dan the Penguin yet again on the desk here, with a close-up a few seconds later. And then when the trio enters the bookstore, it's hard to make out, but I think that's Tacta Bunny on the counter. And a handful of more Tacta friends on the bookshelf, including Teo the Sloth, Dan the Penguin, Tacta Bunny, and I think that's Tacta Squirrel. I mean, it's definitely a squirrel. Oh, and there's also that worm guy that just hangs out with the gang. After I skimmed through the cinematics, I wanted to go through all of the Valorant agent reveals and trailers just to make sure they didn't make any appearances there, and from what I could tell, they weren't present in any of them. But now that I provided you with everything, or at least most of the things we know about Tactabear, I think it's time to start getting into some of the theories that the players in the community have come up with. I'm going to start off with the most popular theory that I see a lot of people bring up, which is the Annie Tibbers theory. If you play League, that name might have sounded familiar to you, but for those of you like me who don't know, Annie is a character that you can play on League of Legends, and her character has a pet named Tibbers, who is a bear. Right off the bat, you wouldn't assume that this was Tactabear because, well, obviously they don't really resemble each other. Tibbers' eyes have a button and a stitched on X, while Tactabear... Huh. Annie has a voice line in the game where she asks for her bear. Have you seen my bear Tibbers? A lot of people point out that Tactabear is a reference to her missing bear Tibbers. Another voice line that gets played in League that also convinces me that Tactabear could potentially be connected to Tibbers is this one where she says you can't come to Tibbers' tea party. You can't come to Tibbers' tea party! 
Alrighty. <laughs> Let's fly back outside of Bree City spawn again towards the mansion. Tactibear and friends are having some sort of party. I don't see any tea, but it looks like a party. On Icebox, he's definitely had some kind of party, just not with tea. In all seriousness, I think the main part of this theory that makes the most sense to me is that Tibbers comes from League, which is another game created by Riot. It makes sense to me that there are some references to League of Legends and Valorant. A good example of an existing League reference is the Scuttle Shack on Split. So maybe Tactivair is an obscure reference to Tibbers. The second most popular or common theory that I see floating around is the Call of Duty Teddy Bear Theory. Now, this might sound crazy, but despite being an FPS enthusiast, I've never really played that many games from the COD franchise. So, when I first came across this fan theory, I had no idea how the connection could be made to Tactibear. After some research, I, I think I can see it now. In Call of Duty, the teddy bear is one of the most prominent easter eggs that you can find across a multitude of games, including the Modern Warfare and Black Ops series. Some of the bears serve no other purpose than to just be a fun easter egg to discover, while some bears regenerate your health, and others play music if you find and interact with all of them. There's a really informative video by Captain Excellent who talked to a COD developer about the teddy bear easter egg. I'll link the full video in the description, but essentially, the developer explains how it just started out as nothing more than a fun easter egg for players to discover. And when the fans started to theorize as to why the bear was placed there, it became like a sort of a community tradition to find the teddy bear wherever they could. In future installments of COD games, there would be more teddy bears for players to find, even making appearances in this trailer for Modern Warfare 2. There's even a massive easter egg in Call of Duty Warzone, like literally. Now, the reason why I think that this theory is a plausible connection to Tactibear is because I think Tactibear is Riot's way of paying homage to the COD franchise. Call of Duty is one of, if not the biggest, first person shooter franchise in the world. It makes sense for me that other games incorporate some kind of reference to COD. I mean, it could be a stretch, but there's teddy bear easter eggs in Fallout 4, there's some in the Battlefield series, there's a secret room in Dying Light 2 full of teddy bears, there's one in Halo Reach, Left 4 Dead 2, and even one in CSGO. We'll get to that one next. This theory is probably my personal favorite one, just because it ties my two favorite games together, CSGO and Valorant. Despite playing Counter-Strike for more than half my life and sinking over 4,000 hours into the game, I never noticed this teddy bear placed in Squeaky. And it got me thinking, this wasn't here before, was it? And sure enough, when I loaded into the old version of Cache, the bear wasn't there, meaning it was only implemented after the update in 2019. But why? There were a handful of other easter eggs added into this new version of Cache, like this broken part of the window above Sunroom made to be in the shape of a chicken, the infamous residence of CSGO. There's also this poster of Vasily Alexandrovich Arkhipov, sorry if I butchered your name, uh, it's an easter egg dedicated to the man who prevented World War III. So this got me thinking. Were they adding easter eggs that had some kind of connection to the game, or some sort of reference to real life? If so, does this teddy bear have some kind of deeper meaning? There isn't much that you can do to interact with it though. Shooting it doesn't do anything, but if you knife it, it makes this funny noise. There's not much else to the bear though. Now the reason why I like this theory and why it makes sense to me is because the co-creator of Cash, Volcano, is also a senior map designer for Valorant. He helped create Split, which is making its return in the next update, and it has a handful of teddy bears scattered across the map. Split was one of the first original maps in Valorant, which was released in 2020, so maybe Tactibear was implemented as a little callback to his previous work. I tried reaching out to Volcano to see if he has any ideas about Tactibear, but I haven't gotten a response yet. So what do you guys think? Those were some of the major theories that I've come across in the past month that I've been looking into Tactibear. Which one was your favorite? Which ones do you think makes the most sense? And do you have your own theory as to what Tactibear is? 
To be honest, it's probably not that deep, but it's fun to think about. I'll be creating an updated version of the Tactive Bear locations video that I made two years ago, this time with the inclusion of the new maps like Fracture and Pearl, so go ahead and check that out when you can. This was more of an experimental video for me, so thank you for taking the time to watch it till the end. Alright, I'll see you around.